Notre prochain conférencier sera euh, M. Donald Robinson, géologue et président de Ressources East Main. Le Dr. Robinson a obtenu son doctorat de l'Université de Western Ontario en 1982. De 1987 à 1994, il opérait sa propre firme de consultation, Robinson Exploration Services. Il se spécialisait alors dans l'exploration pour les métaux de base et précieux au Canada et en Australie. Pendant deux ans, il a été responsable de l'exploration lors de la découverte du sulfure massif volcanogène orifère de Lewis Pond en Australie pour Tri-Origin Exploration. Avant de créer sa propre firme de consultant, le Dr. Robinson avait, de 1981 à 87, supervisé le développement d'un programme intégré d'exploration des métaux précieux et de base pour la compagnie Westmin Resources Limited. Ceci avait mené à la découverte du dépôt orifère de haute claire à Clearwater, dans la bande volcanique de East Main. Dr. Robinson est président et chef de la direction de East Main depuis 1994. Il consacre tout son temps aux affaires de la corporation. À vous, Don, pour une conférence qui s'intitule « East Main Resources, it's all about the grid ». Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the association for giving us the opportunity to uh, give you an update on our uh, flagship project, which we believe will, uh, in the future, contribute to gold production in Quebec. Uh, I intend to give you an overview and uh, focus on the geology and what we have outlined in terms of our understanding of the project. We'll start with an introduction and a location cover some regional geology and deposit geology, key elements of alteration that are associated with this project, talk about uh, two zones that we've out outlined, it's called the 450 and the 850 west zones, uh, outline some structural controls of the deposit, then give you some uh, an overview of recent geophysical data that ties into the geology that we've uh, been working on. And we put this in, all into 3D software and tie the project and the key elements of the deposit into 3D and give you a summary. Start with, we are dealing with uh, the James Bay uh, region right now. It's part of the shield. Um, and characteristic of this district is that this is the same geology as we'll see in all of the other mining camps and all of them are cornerstoned by at least one giant gold deposit. And this district is no different in that uh, Eleanor, in my opinion, is likely to be uh, more than 10 million ounces by before uh, it's done. There's multiple deposits up here. There's at least five that uh, we know of. We own two of them, the Clearwater Project and the East Main Mine uh, deposit. What's different with this district is that mining is about to begin. And as a composed to many of these districts are uh, been mining for a long time, Tim, and since 1909, and uh, we're in the law of diminishing returns in terms of looking for big deposits. That's why we're up here. Um, zooming into some location information, uh, the East Main uh, uh, flagship is the Clearwater Project. It's on the north uh, boundary of the East Main Reservoir. Uh, about uh, 80 kilometers north of a commercial airport at Namaska. Uh, just north of us is the Eleanor project that Gold Corp is developing. We own 12 projects covering uh, 1,200 square kilometers in the district. Our second project is the East Main Mine property. We heard this morning about the Renard deposit. And, you know, it has been serviced in the past by an ice road, and this, uh, we're Looking forward to seeing the completion of uh, a permanent road that will come up through the East Main Mine and up to the Renard Project. Uh, this is our lifeline. This is EM1. This is the spillway for the East Main River. This gives us permanent road access to the deposit, which this road comes within two kilometers of the deposit, and we're within uh, 10 kilometers of the, the power grid. Uh, This is just a quick overview of the regional geology of the district. Uh, this is what we would call a uh, greenstone belt supergroup. We're seeing uh, a lowermost bimodal assemblage of volcanic rocks that is overlain by a sedimentary complex. And that blue dotted pattern represents the break, a structural and stratigraphic break 
between those two groups. Essentially, the best exploration uh, will be in and around that break between the supergroups. So we see the Eleanor Project, which is a sedimentary hosted gold deposit that's not far from that break in the supergroup, and the Eau Claire deposit, which is a mafic hosted sheeted vein complex. Same thing, we are near a, a structural and stratigraphic break. If we zoom in to the Clearwater Project, that is the East Main uh, barrage for our access that comes right onto the property. This is a bimodal volcanic assemblage, green or mafic volcanic rocks, yellow or felsic pyroclastics. It's been invaded by a series of tonalites and porphyry, classic Archean geology. Um, we have identified a, a belt that's at least five kilometers long from rock sampling, soil sampling, et cetera, that we've seen uh, a district that have high grade uh, showings, quartz tourmaline veins, etc. And the Eau Claire deposit sits uh, right here at the western end of the belt. Zooming in on uh, the local geology, again what we're seeing here, the notable feature is this dashed black line which reps represents uh, 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 the F2 fold closure. So this is an anticline right here. Footwall rocks in yellow are felsic pyroclastic rocks. These are mafic volcanic rocks. And this is repeated over and over and over again with this belt plunging to the west. We have identified two zones on the deposit, the 450 west zone in blue dashed lines right here, the 850 west zone right here. That uh, comprises our resource. This has in turn been invaded by a series of tonal lights and porphyry dikes. Um, along that contact, we've seen for several kilometers um, a lot of gold mineralization, both in vein and in wide zones on both sides of the deposit, uh, outside the footprint of the immediate deposit. The deposit is a sheety vein complex. Uh, the red lines represent quartz tourmaline veins projected to surface. The 450 zone shown right here the 850 zone right here, they have two different orientations and different geometries. Uh, but essentially you are looking at a full closure with a football volcanoclastic rock here and an overlying mafic volcanic assemblage here uh, and it's forming a hinge. Uh, this represents the drill pattern that we're concentrating on in 2012 uh, that has uh, been focused on the east edge of the deposit over here the north edge, which is ex still expanding in this direction. Um, up on the 850 zone, we call it the soccer field. We've got high grade on the south face of this section and more high grade on the north face uh, of this section. Uh, typically, we see a lot of free gold present in the deposit. So a red symbol here represents uh, that we've seen fine free gold flower within at least one of the quartz tourmaline veins. This is the 450 zone that we call it. Um, it's been stripped off for about two football fields end to end. Each square represents a 50 by 50 meter uh, interval. And these are quartz tourmaline veins that have exposed on surface. And the veins themselves post-date the fold. They in fact cross cut uh, that contact from the mafic back to the felsic, back into the mafic rocks. And they in turn are cross cut by a late dike. So this is pre-dike, post-fold, D2 uh, type emplacement of, of these vein systems. We see both wide zones and some very high grade zones in the deposit. Typical, the composite grade of the vein systems at surface is about 23 and a half grams. You'll get an overall <coughs> thickness here, you'll get 30 meters of three grams. You'll get drill holes that have come into the deposit. Hole 98 was quite exceptional where it hit four veins, uh, which gave us a composite grade of 55 meters at 24 grams. And in the case of the 450 zone, uh, outside the vein systems, essentially it's barren. In the case of the 850 zone, we've seen very wide zones that are completely gold bearing. So this is the outcrop of the 450 zone, and essentially we're near the contact between the felsic volcanoclastics, uh, which are north of us, uh, we are looking west and we see a sea of porphyry uh, invaded within the basalt and the vein orientations will be oblique to this picture. 
As we uh, look in detail adjacent to those uh, quartz tourmaline veins, is that we see uh, the porphyries and the mafic volcanic rocks have formed tight parasitic folds, Z folds on the south limb, uh, S folds on the north limb, and the quartz tourmaline veins are aligned uh, along the axial plane of the hinges and the troughs of these uh, F2 Z folds. Uh, this is a illustration of the 850 zone. It's a different geometry. They're north, uh, northeast striking. They're sub-vertical. Uh, they do come to surface uh, as narrow high-grade veins. Uh, in this outcrop over here, we've seen about 20 veins throughout the section so far. Um, geology and exploration is serendipity. Is that literally our former partner uh, was Soquem. They stopped a trench right here and 25 meters south of it, we find the high grade soccer field that we'll show you in a minute. Uh, this uh, had quite some remarkable uh, grades at surface from channel sampling and drilling underneath this has shown that there is a vertical lateral continuity to this, this, this vein system here, this vein system here, this one here, this one here, et cetera. So we are looking at a stacking of quartz tourmaline veins and alteration zones. Alteration, we log it as M8. These are sub-vertical. The average is six and a half meters, and these things go up to 25 meters thick and, and poke their nose right up to, to surface. Uh, in detail for scale there, that's uh, Jean-Francois Ravenel, who's uh, assisted us from SRK in geology. And essentially, we can still see mafic volcanic rocks, and the little wiggles uh, here are uh, quartz tourmaline. Those are uh, feldspar porphyry dikes. Here we see a stacking of quartz tourmaline veins in red, uh, and brown will be uh, M8 uh, strongly altered um, basalts. And in this case, uh, channel sample through the section right here, which will be right through that section there, it is 16 grams across 13 and a half meters. This is a gold tellurium system, so we'll see sort of a, uh, a very strong correlation with uh, gold and tellurium through the deposit. And invariably, uh, when we st we'll see uh, sections that will go to quite uh, extreme grade, in this case, up to 268 gram rock. So the deposit itself is a quartz tourmaline vein system. It's a multi-element deposit, so it's gold, tellurium, bismuth, moly, silver. So there's tellurides and bismuth bis bismuthonides. Uh, the veins are typically laminated and brecciated with replacement zones on their margins on both sides. The principal host rock is a basalt. Uh, the key elements of the basalt have a very unique chemistry. Uh, but the veins also occur within the adjacent rocks to the north in the volcanic clastics and in porphyry itself. Alteration is tourmaline, uh, actinolite, biotite, carbonate. Um, this is uh, a unique structural setting in that we've identified two major shear zones. And one shear zone follows the vein system on the 450 zone uh, orientation and the second one on the 850 zone coinciding with a fold closure uh, F2 fold. This is what I would call a low sulfidation system, so there is a little bit of sulfide present. There's pyrite, puritite, and calcopyrite. Uh, however, most of the, all of the gold occurs as a fine gold flower uh, on its own. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, tellurides present in addition to that. So this is looking at uh, the outcrop of the uh, 450 zone. Uh, there's more tourmaline here than you'll ever see uh, in, in geology. Uh, this, all of this black material are uh, blocks of tourmaline, and literally you can fit, it's a jigsaw puzzle, you can literally fit them back together. Uh, white is a quartz carbonate material, uh, and on the margins of that we see a schist, uh, which we refer to as an M8 unit. Uh, these are laterally and vertically zoned. Typically, they'll go from 75 to 300 meters in strike. On the 450 zone, the average thickness is about 1.75 meters, but up to th will come up to uh, nine meters in thickness. The veins are off will come up to uh, nine meters in thickness. The veins are often laminated, and this is a key feature that we use uh, to identify the orientation relative to the shear zones. In the this photo here, 
This is a ratchet texture that we see throughout the deposit. Uh, we've uh, dubbed this uh, a piano key breccia, and literally it is cemented by a laminated quartz tourmaline, uh, or, uh, sorry, quartz carbonate uh, rock material. Uh, in the, the photo above, we see a laminated texture to the veins, and then more massive layers that also have this same uh, piano key breccia texture. So these laminated patterns are or oriented in the plane of that F2 fold. This is a, an illustration of the uh, 850 zone here where we see a tight uh, Z fold. Uh, the veins are deformed. The veins aren't folded, but the veins are boudinaged. Uh, they are uh, deformed. Uh, here we see a tight Z fold and the composition of the adjacent rock has gone completely obliterated to actinolite plus tourmaline. Uh, this is an example of a laminated vein on surface. So we have a central east-west vein that is laminated and brecciated and bounded on both sides. We see this massive replacement zone where we have quartz carbonate material flooding and pseudomorphing that Z2 fold fabric and essentially petering out until it can't penetrate uh, anymore. So key element here is to measure the orientation uh, of that laminated texture, which will give you the uh, orientation of the structures and how to follow it. This is another example of the, uh, the, the uh, vein systems that we've got here, a central east-west uh, vein that's laminated and brecciated, and on both sides we see a massive uh, quartz tourmaline replacement. The danger is as you drill uh, through a section here, one might interpret that you're drilling down dip, where in fact it's just a pseudomorph of the adjacent fabric. Uh, there's a third stage vein cross-cutting the uh, system right here, and these also can be gold bearing. Uh, the, the structures also uh, penetrate the uh, porphyries as well, so this would be one of the gold bearing structures that's ripping through uh, porphyry. And on the walls, you'll see a laminated uh, tourmaline that uh, is like a laminated vein that we see. And adjacent to this, we see this horrendous uh, tourmaline silica replacement on either side, like we've seen within the Mafic examples. This is a new discovery that we found just north of the deposit. So this is hosted within the volcanoclastic rocks. And we see, a, again, a central uh, quartz carbonate vein with laminated tourmaline here, uh, the pseudo-replacement uh, textures, which have subsequently been brecciated and fractured uh, orthogonally, uh, as we've seen on the main outcrop. This is a, an, in a, in an illustration of a drill hole through uh, the 850 zone that we have. And again, uh, a central laminated and brecciated vein in sector A. Uh, and adjacent, that's your Z-fold replacement that is uh, tourmaline, actinolite, uh, biotite, carbonate rock. This overall interval is 10 and a half meters wide and at, at just under eight grams. And within it, the second you see these laminated and brecciated veins, the grade spikes up. And in this case, we're looking at just under 25 gram gold and just over 26 gram tellurium uh, over a two and a half meter interval. Uh, invariably, we see a fine gold flower. It's, it's generally a, a pinprick uh, type uh, size to it, and they occur in clusters. They occur within tourmaline, quartz carbonate, and within the replacement zones on the adjacent side. Invariably, there is a bit of sulfide, principally puritite, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, veins, but you will have intercepts that have absolutely no sulfide whatsoever and high grade. Uh, there is a lot of free gold present in the deposit. There's over 200 drill holes uh, where we see a fine gold flower to it. This is uh, an example of vein 18, which is on the north edge of the 850 zone. This would be very coarse gold. Uh, invariably, we see the average grade is about a 25 by 50 micron size to it. If you see free gold present, the grade can really uh, shoot up quite considerably. Uh, what's interesting here is this is a section that's 28 meters down the hole or about 15 meters from surface 
on the north flank of the deposit yet to be added to the resource. On the right hand side is an example of a slab of the uh, soccer field and again the black would be tourmaline within the quartz carbonate material and that would be a laminated edge to it here with clusters of gold and in this case it'd be coarse gold in that it's about a millimeter size and this would give us an interval of 16 grams across 13 and a half meters and in this case it's 268 gram rock. Uh, we've sent six tons of material to Lakefield to do the uh, metallurgy. Uh, the first positive that came out of it is that these are particularly soft. So the work index is ranging from about 10 to 11, uh, which means you don't have to leave it in the ball mill very long. There is a lot of carbonate present, so the acid-base uh, accounting is base positive. So low sulfidation, high carbonate content, very favorable from an environmental stand of, uh, standpoint. Uh, this is an example of hole 98 where this vein came back at two and a half kilos uh, per ton. Um, but with all of this fine gold flour, translation, the gravity recoveries were into the, from ranging from the high 40s to the high 70s. So really uh, high gravity recovery, no big surprise there. Uh, what we were uh, impressed with is that uh, if you put the tails back into a flotation circuit, we were then into the low 90s in terms of recovery, and with a conventional circuit, you're up to 98 and a half. So both gold and the tellurium came out through the gravity and the flotation uh, circuit. In terms of the deposit, this is uh, a schematic of the alteration pattern that we see over and over again, both a structurally and strata-bound alteration. Uh, you have a central quartz tourmaline vein in the middle, uh, bounded on both sides by actinolite tourmaline rock, and on an outer boundary, we see a biotite carbonate schist, and on the extreme end members is that it's just basalt. We've added a, an alteration index to our logging, and this has been uh, an innovation that I would recommend people add at the beginning of your program, not 10 years into your program, but we essentially log the core from A0 to A3, A0 being essentially the unaltered rock, and A3 being uh, over 50% schist. And anything that is A1 or better, you sample. Uh, we've also done this for a structural index uh, to add to it, and the alteration is logged based on the mineralogy that's found in the, in the assemblage, terminally lactinolite, biotite, carbonate is the predominant assemblage. Uh, we see this uh, many times. This is an example where you get this central laminated and brecciated vein that's bounded on both sides by the hot alteration. And that halter, hot alteration is a massive actinolite uh, with porphyroblasts on tourmaline on either side. Uh, here's an example that where the, the cut face, light green, is a fine uh, prismatic actinolite. Uh, porphyroblasts in black are tourmaline. If you see actinolite at Clearwater, you are in the system. So this is a key pathfinder mineral uh, to the deposit and uh, actinolite tourmaline rock means that you certainly are into the uh, hot alteration associated with the deposit. And this can range from less than a meter to up to 25 meters thick in terms of the uh, unit. Uh, we get a, that's the hot alteration here, which is actinolite tourmaline rock. We see a sharp alteration boundary to it. Uh, and then we're into massive biotite carbonate rock. Uh, this can be 500 ppb or it can be 400 grams. So, uh, and you can see that it's, it's complexly deformed uh, uh, on, to, on top of that. This is the recent geophysical survey total field that we flew in August. We had geophysics done prior to it, but we've done a uh, very, very tight line spacing on the deposit. Uh, Eau Claire is occurring in that red circle. This is an F2 fold, so you're seeing a high mag, low mag uh, interface right here. Uh, this would be the 450 uh, veins that structure shear, and this is the 850. So I'm gonna run around. Just quickly, the uh, veins from the 450 zone are stacked up in parallel to that shear zone, the 850 on and that orientation. And this is the 3D model of the deposit that shows that hinge at that intersection. 
This is the grade shell of the deposit. Gray represents surface. This is 900 meters below surface. This is the drilling that we've done in the last 24 months to expand the deposit. And in red stars represents high grade that we've identified on the north, south, and west end of the deposit. Bounded on the, the hanging wall side by porphyry and on the foot wall side by uh, volcanoclastic rock with the, this squeezing in between. Looking uh, east, that is the base of the open pit that we've uh, projected with essentially about uh, 800,000 ounces now. Uh, we expect to be north of a million ounces by the end of 2012. And this is looking at length of the deposit. Most of the expansion has been on the west end. We're now testing on the east end. That would be the base of the pit. And outside here are exploration targets that we think we can add to the resource size. And zooming in, we see this F2 structure, and these will form chutes that uh, follow that same pattern. And just graphically, there's the 450 zone that uh, we've defined. There's about 600,000 ounces at six grams over here. And we think we can double up the resource uh, from the 2011 and 2012 drilling. So basically, uh, a multi-element deposit sheeted vein complex a potentially open pitable and underground exploration. We've drilled uh, 40,000 meters this year to add to it. The magnetics will really help in terms of the deposit itself and outside the deposit. And 3D exploration really is the in vogue now in terms of adding it. We think this uh, will ultimately be one of uh, Quebec's future mines. And just finally, I'd like to uh, congratulate and thank our exploration team. It's been uh, quite a number of individuals that put, have uh, contributed to this project, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we don't have time for questions. No, on n'a pas le temps pour les questions. On va procéder pour uh, la prochaine conférence.